everyone, uh, this is Miss Dunbar here, um, Teacher of Psychology and Wellbeing at Bishop Biggs Academy. Um, I sincerely hope you and all of your family are keeping safe, well and happy in these pretty strange days. Um, so I'm going to be speaking to you a little bit about sleeping and sleeping well in 2020. I know a lot has been going on. Um, it's been quite a stressful year, I think we could safely say. Um, and this may all have, have an impact on our sleep. Um, so today I'm just going to talk you through a little bit about sleep, a little bit of background about what it's all about, um, some facts about sleep. And then finally, and probably most importantly, I'm going to go through some top tips for sleeping well um, which I'm hoping that would be of some benefit to you guys and your family um, just now. Okay, let's get started. So, if you have a wee look at this slide, scientists have discovered a revolutionary new treatment that makes you live longer, enhances your memory, makes you more creative, makes you look more attractive, keeps you slim, lowers food cravings, protects you from cancer and dementia, wards off colds and flu, lowers your risks of heart attacks and strokes, not to mention diabetes. You'll even feel happier, less depressed and less anxious. So it says, are you interested there at the bottom? And I'm sure all of us would be interested in something that was going to promise this. Um, and yep, you've probably guessed it by now. Not describing some miracle new cure all wonder drug, but actually this is the proven benefit of a full night of sleep. And as we know, it's completely free. So I'm hoping that's maybe perked your interest just a little bit. So here's a few interesting facts for you. Did you know that humans spend a third of their lives asleep? So if you live to the grand old age of 90, you will spend about 30 years of your life sleeping. So that kind of shows us that this thing that we do every night that we don't really give too much thought about is actually really important. In fact, it's about just as important as eating and breathing. Okay, it's something we've evolved to do. It's really important for us. The record for the longest period with no sleep is 11 days and pain tolerance is actually reduced by sleep deprivation. So if you have a few nights of really bad sleep and then you go to get some kind of medical procedure, you will find it sorer eh, than if you had lots of good sleep the, the days leading up to that. So that just shows you, okay, so it's really good for pain reduction as well. The, we've probably all experienced this at some point, that sensation of falling when you're half asleep and jerking yourself awake. Yeah, we've all been there. They are called hypnic jerks, okay, and they happen to all of us, um, and they are pretty strange. It's thought that around 15% of people are sleepwalkers, okay, it's quite a high percentage, so yep, not that uncommon. So are we getting enough sleep? Okay, it's maybe a question that we've asked ourselves a lot, especially over the last wee while uh, with the whole situation just now. So... It is recommended that teenagers need about eight to 10 hours of sleep a night. I know, I'm sure a lot of teenagers will be surprised at that. And adults need roughly about eight. Um, and you'll see the little picture we've got there, um, all the different kind of amounts of sleep needed at different ages and stages. Um, it is a myth that older adults need less sleep. Nope, they need the same about eight hours of sleep a night but um, the elderly find it more difficult to have long periods of sleep. Okay, So sleep does become more fragmented, but they do need about eight as well. So if you're worried that you're not getting enough sleep, okay, try not to worry because we've got some top tips um, for sleep coming up very soon. Okay, okay so looking at this, um, we are talking about our circadian rhythms. So over the course of our 24 hour day, we have lots of different rhythms that are taking place um, over the day. So you've got things like body temperature, when you release hormones, you've got kind of um, heart rate, you've got cardiovascular strength, and you've also got your sleep-wake cycle. So if you just have a wee look at that just now, your circadian rhythm there, you'll see all the different points of the day when different things happen. So you'll see there at um, five o'clock in the evening, your muscle strength, and your kind of cardiovascular efficiency is at its highest. So a good time to go to the gym. 
um, you'll see as well about nine o'clock at night you start to produce the hormone melatonin and that is your sleep hormone and that sets you up for a night of sleep. So it's really important to, to note that um, our circadian rhythms are intrinsically linked to light and darkness. That's why it's really important if you're wanting to go to sleep to make your environment nice and dark, to put away screens that emit light because that can actually um, mess up your circadian rhythm and stop this release of the hormone melatonin and that's why you might struggle to sleep. Okay, so something that's really important. In the same respect, in the morning when you're trying to get up, flood your room with light because that will do the opposite. It will stop um, the production of melatonin, that sleep hormone, and you'll feel more alert. So some people, quite smug people, um, are more alert earlier in the morning okay, and they feel more tired early at night. Whereas some people feel more alert later in the day and want to go to bed later. So this difference appears to be mostly biological and very much influenced by our genetics. So in sleep research and sleep science, this is called a chronotype. Okay? So whether you prefer to get up early and go to bed early or up late and go to bed late, that is your chronotype. Okay? And early risers are referred to as morning larks. Well, late risers tend to be called night owls. And you'll notice on this PowerPoint that I've also included a little link there that you can try the quiz to see whether you're a morning lark or a night owl. You probably know a little bit already, but the quiz is there if you'd like to try it out. So teenagers have a different chronotype than older adults. So they're not being lazy when they want a lion at the weekends or when they struggle to get up for school during the week. They are linked to this chronotype. Teenagers need more sleep than adults, but this is because of their biological rhythms. They naturally like to go to sleep later and get up later. They have what we call an evening chronotype, so they are definitely more likely to be a night owl. So if they want that extra long lie at the weekend, it's really not their fault. So have you ever noticed that sometimes you wake up and you feel really good, you feel really fresh and ready to go for your day, while on other days you feel really groggy and you would pay a lot of money to have another half hour in bed? Yep, we've all been there. This is all down to uh, at what stage of your sleep cycle you wake up during. And this is really important to, if you want to wake up feeling fresh, you have to try and um, kind of wake up at a certain point in your cycle. So people are at their freshest when they wake up at the end of a sleep cycle. And a sleep cycle lasts about 90 minutes. So if you'd like to know how to wake up feeling fresh, listen on. OK, so this is all about the 90 minute rule. So if you have a look at these little animations here, if you would like to get nine hours of sleep okay, and you want to get up at 8 a.m., what you need to do is work back in 90 minute blocks. So you'll see on the right hand side animation that that would take you to about 11 p.m. So you'd want to try and fall asleep as close to 11 p.m. as possible. That's why they call it the 90 minute rule. Work back in 90 minute chunks to find out when you should be asleep for. I have um, included a little link there um, to a video that can show you a little bit more about this too if you'd like to look at that later. So why should we take sleep seriously? Well, if you remember back to the first slide, well, we saw that it does an amazing array of things. So it takes care of our health. Um, things like dementia um, can be warded off with good sleep throughout a lifetime. So many different things. So let's just have a wee look at the things that it increases and decreases. So sleep increases your concentration, your attention, your decision making, your creativity, your social skills and as we already mentioned your health okay but it also decreases your mood changes so you have a better kind of more stable mood decreases stress anger impulsivity and it decreases your likelihood to look to drink and smoke okay so it's something that we really need to look at seriously it is pretty amazing thing sleep so here is the most important part let's look at our top sleep tips. If you're struggling to sleep, have a wee go at some of these and hopefully in a few weeks you will see your sleep start to get better. First one, quite an obvious one, is put the screens away. 
So stay off your electronic devices close to when you want to fall asleep. About an hour before you want to go to sleep um, is, is best. The blue light emitted from the screen will trick the brain into stopping the release of the sleep hormone melatonin and delay sleep. Like we mentioned before, light is really, really important at controlling our sleep-wake cycle, so we don't want any unnecessary light too late in the day. Um, if you must, must, must use them for a short time, then it is the best idea to use night shift mode. Okay, it changes that blue light into more of an orange light. It doesn't affect your brain quite as much. And you can access this through normally your settings, your display brightness section of your phone. Okay, but I will say that not using them at all is better. Also, you know, screens, um, you're kind of looking at news, social media, all of these things are really stimulating for our brain. And the news just now is really depressing and you know it can stop you from sleeping because you're thinking about all of these things so uh, it's not just the light it's the kind of stimulation of things that you're looking at as well which can stop you getting into a nice restful sleep okay so it makes your heart uh, your brain hard to switch off tip is have a regular wake and bedtime this allows internal body clock to get into a pattern okay so if you have a regular bedtime regular wake time you will notice that the body gets into this little use of this pattern and you'll find it easier to get up and go to sleep eventually and i know it's tempting but try not to change your routine too much at the weekend because this can kind of make it out of sync an obvious one is avoid caffeine as much as you can and i would say that avoiding caffeine after lunch is preferable um caffeine takes a long time to get out of your body um up to about six hours and it keeps you awake okay it blocks receptors in your brain to make you think that you're awake um, and then eventually you will experience a caffeine crash but it takes so long to get out of your body it's best to avoid it after lunch if possible one avoid eating too close to bedtime up to two hours before okay and avoid sugary spicy snacks close to bedtime so um eating really disturbs your sleep this one is avoid napping during the day for longer than 40 minutes otherwise you will go on to disrupt your nighttime sleep and you need that big chunk of sleep at night and um, if you do want to go for a nap about 20 minutes, half an hour is your optimum amount of time. Um, there is a little trick as well. Um, some people use maybe having a strong coffee just before they go for a nap. And then it takes about 20 minutes for the caffeine to kick in and then it will wake you up again. So that's if you are needing to do a nap, if you're driving long distance or something like that, that is a good tip. But try to avoid it if you feel like your nap is stopping you getting a long sleep at night. Next one, um, I think we mentioned this before, but keep your bedroom nice and cool and dark. Uh, we mentioned that before when we spoke about our circadian rhythms. Your brain needs to think it's dark and nighttime to set you up for sleep. So it's really important and don't have your room too hot because if it's too hot, it will stop you from having a good night's sleep. Also sticking to a really good sleep routine um, is so beneficial for getting good sleep. So having a regular routine that you stick to so whether that's maybe a warm bath or a warm shower, brushing your teeth, soothing music, breathing exercises, unwinding. So something that's relaxing. So no telly, um, tablets, anything like that. Just something quite chilled and calm and stick to that same routine each night and you should see an improvement in your sleep. And it's a quite a good tip as well. If you're wanting to brush your teeth, I mean, if you think about the light aspect of that, sit, um, standing in a, a bathroom that's completely floodlit, Brushing your teeth is probably not the best thing to do just before you go to sleep. So maybe do that a little bit before and then unwind in a nice dark room. It's a good tip. If you're struggling to fall asleep, here's a little strange trick that you can try. Try to keep your eyes open and try to stay awake. Oddly, attempting to stay awake when you're lying in bed is surprisingly tiring and helps you fall asleep. Now, I've tried this one myself, kind of staring without blinking. You look a bit crazy, but um, it does definitely work and you feel your eyes getting heavier. So I think anything that we could try might help us, is worth it. So your behaviour influences how you feel. So for example, smiling 
even if you don't really feel like smiling, can improve your mood. It can make you feel a bit happier. And the same token, forcing your face into a frown makes you feel sad, okay? It kind of gives your body signals to feel sad. So the same is true of sleep. Why don't you try fooling your body into thinking that you're tired by letting your eyes droop, your arms and legs feel heavy, and maybe even faking a yawn or two. Tell yourself you're tired, act like you're tired, and your body might just be tricked into thinking you are tired. Worth a go. So that is us come to the end of this little sleep section. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've maybe picked up a couple of tips or a couple of bits of information that you could maybe go away and try. As I said, you know, it's been a very stressful time, um, but our sleep is so important for our health, both physical and mental. Um, and I think we could probably all agree that we all need a little bit more of it. So anything we can do to try and help that um, is hopefully useful to you. Um, it's never been more important to look after our health and looking after um, other people's health as well. Um, so starting with a good night's sleep is a really good place to start for a healthy lifestyle. Um, and I'll leave you just with a little quote by Thomas Decker. It says, sleep is the golden chain that ties health and our bodies together. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Thanks.